Hey guys, the video you're about to watch is one of the labs that I'm creating on kbtrends.com for the course on the Cisco CCNA 200 301. The course goes from zero to engineer and teaches you all the concepts and notions that you need to know to go and take the certification exam for the Cisco CCNA 200 301. As you know, the CCNA is one of the main certifications that you can use in the tech industry to boost or even to start a career in this um, in this field. So if you're interested, the course is on kbtrains.com, the website. Thank you, and I'll see you there. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Guy here. Today, we're going to do the lab number 6.3.3 for our course on the Cisco CCNA. We are still talking about NAT or network address translation. In the previous lessons, I showed you what is NAT and how is it useful in today's networks. And then in the first lab, we did static NAT, how to configure and how to verify we also did path or port address translation. And today I'm going to do the configuration and verification of dynamic NAT using pools. The pools will be just the set of IPs that we're going to use externally. And if we take a look at the Cisco CCNA um, exam blueprint, you're going to see that under 4.1, Cisco is requiring us to do the verification configuration of inside source NAT using static and pools. So today, I mean, we did a static last time. Today we're going to do it with the pools and we're going to spend most of our time in gns3 this is the topology that i'm going to use today it's just a simple one with two networks this one is internal 10.0.0/24 we have the external 20.0.0/24 and our company has been assigned the 20.0.0/29 as you know because we talked about it at the beginning of this of this course if the company is assigned a slash 29 like this one here let's say by the isp they'll be able to use that one all the way to that six even if you use pools you can just grab any random public ip you need to have the ip address that is assigned to you so that anybody on the internet will be able to send the traffic we have that one on the interface on the router and then these three are going to be part of the pool and then we have the external uh device which is r2 with that 12 on the on the interface and inside, I'm just adding 10 to the PC number. So this one would be that 11, that 12, that, that 13, and that 14. The goal at the end will be for these devices to be able to ping the router number two that is over here. And first, it won't be possible because when the router will, I mean, when the computer will ping, the packet will get here, but this router will not know how to respond because it doesn't know this private network. And usually, or normally, Private networks don't go to the internet. So that's why we need to do NAT at this level so that we have public IPs going to this router and it will know how to respond. That's the goal for this lab. But before going there, let me show you some commands that we're going to use um, today. First of all, um, these are just regular NAT commands that we saw last time. So we have IP NAT inside that is going to be set on the inside interface. In our case, the inside interface is this one here, gig zero, um, gigabit zero zero. And then IP not outside will be on the outside interface. And we're going to create a pool with this command, IP not pool, we give the name of the pool. We give the start IP and the end IP. And then we do net mask to give the subnet mask. And we're going to use the access list to filter our network or the devices we want to be using this NAT. I showed you access list last time, but we're going to talk about access list in detail when we will talk about security. So here we have a standard access list by doing IP access list standard, we give it a name. And then inside the access list, we're going to permit network ID and the wildcard mask, depending on what we're trying to select. And then we have the command, the final command for configuration, which is IP not source list. We give the access list and then pool the name of the pool, and that will be it. These are verification commands that we're going to use as well. Okay, look, let's go directly on Packet Tracer and start playing with it. So once we come here, let me make sure we have the correct configuration on these different devices. This is the PC one. I can do show IP. It's going to show me that we have that 11, and this is the default gateway, so we are good. I'm mostly going to verify on the router one and router two. So router one, uh, let me make this a little bigger. So for router one, if I do show IP interface brief, 
going to see that we have on 0, 0, we have 10.0.0.1. On 1, 0, we have 20.0.0.1. So these are 0, 0 and 1, 0. And then we can go and verify the router 2. Um, first, I need to change the name, the host name, because I made a mistake there. So it's actually router 2 or R2. Okay, so I can do show IP interface brief. You can see that we have 20.0.0.12 on 1 slash 0. Oh, we are good. Okay, so first of all, let's try to ping from PC1 to router 2. Let me start the packet capture here. This is why I like GNS3 because I can use Wireshark for packet capture, which is great. We're going to see what we have through that link. Things like this, uh, the loopbacks, I'm going just to remove them. So I'll do and apply a filter and say um, not selected. All right, so we won't have any loop here or loop packets or loop back, whatever. Okay, so if I come back on the PC number one, I can ping 20.0.0.12. And as I said, it's not going to work because the packet will get there, but this router will not know how to respond. Let's see that. If I ping, you're going to see that it's going to time out. And if we go back in Wireshark, uh, let me also exclude VTP or CDP. Filter and not selected. All right. So we have some broadcasts. And then we have this packet going out to router number two. Look at this packet here. We only have the request, but we don't have the responses. As you can see, response, I mean, no response found. Why? Because when we are sending those packets outside, we are still keeping the private IP. And we are sending it to the public network, the 20.0.12. We don't change the IP here. What we need is to have an IP that is in the 20s, in the network of 20.0.0.0, so that this computer or this router will be able to respond. Right now, with the private IP, we won't receive any response from this. So to do that, we need to implement NAT, and that's what we're going to do now in the router number one. So I'll go under the router number one, and I'll go under config mode, configuration, configure terminal, um, interface gigabit 00, which is the inside interface that I showed you. I'll do IP NAT inside, and then uh, interface gigabit 10, this will be IP NAT outside. Um, and that's it. So now we can create the access list by doing IP access list standard. Um, I'll give it the name of NAT, just a name, a random name. And then inside, I'm going to permit the network number 10.0.0.0 with a wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255. This means that um, it will help us filter the traffic. If the traffic is coming from anything with 10.0.0.0 at the beginning or the network part, it's going to qualify. So the last octet is not significant. Only the first three octets because we have 0, 0, 0 here and 255 at the end. And that's why that's how wildcard mask uh, work. So I'm going to enter this and we have our access list created. And now I can create a pool by doing IP not pool i will call it ext as an external and we'll give the start ip 20.0.0.4 and the end ip 20.0.0.6 and we'll do net mask and give the subnet mask here i'm giving the subnet mask um of the slash 24 because i just don't want to create any complication uh, even though i was assigned or the sign is slash 29 so if it was slash 99, I could have done uh, 248 here, but I'm just going to leave it at zero and enter. So I have the pool created. Now I need to activate NAT by doing IP NAT inside source list. The list is the access list that we created. We're going to call We called it NAT. And then we're going to use the pool EXT. All right, that's it. Um, NAT is activated. I can verify by doing show IP, no, or sh just a show run. Um, include NAT. We can see our different commands that we pushed with NAT in them. 
um, and we can go under PC1 and try to ping again. Now it should be able to reach the device. Okay, now it's going across. And if we go back in Wireshark and take a look at it, you can see that the PC number one used 20.0.0.4 to go outside. And this is one of the IPs that we have in the pool. And this uh, the router is going to receive the request and is able to respond. Here you can see the response. Yeah, this is the request and the reply is 76. 76 is here, this is the reply. So our pings are successful from PC1. If we go under PC2, we can also do the same thing, ping 20.0.0.12, and look at this, it's going to grab the next IP available. The next IP is five, so now five is being used by the PC number two. And if I do the same with the PC number three, .0 the PC number 3 is going to grab the next IP, which is .dat6. So we can see here .dat6 is being used. And if you want to verify in the device, we can just go in the router number 1 and do show IP not translations. You can see that we have 11 using, let me grab my pen. We have the 11 using 4, 12 using 5, 13 using 6. So what do you think is going to happen if the PC number 4 is also trying to go out and ping the router 2? Nothing is going to happen because we don't have IPs available anymore because we just had three that are already busy by these. So if PC number 4 is trying to ping, 20.0.0.12, it's going to receive an error. It's not going to, it's not even going outside. And if we go in router one, you can see that we have a message saying that we failed to allocate an address to that 14 because our pool might be exhausted because we just have three IPs. So what you have to know is that the IPs you have in the pool must be at least the same number as the, the users that you want to use the pool or even more than the users so it can work. Because if you have more users or more devices than IPs in the pool, it's going to create uh, errors like this and you won't be able to, to, to do it. And uh, this is mostly used for big devices or significant devices like web servers or file servers or things like that. But for general users, we usually use um, the overload to use PAT or port address translation. And um, here we can try to find a solution to this problem in many ways. I can add the overload to our command that we put here. Um, if I go back, um, show include pool. So I can grab this command and add overload at the end, which is also not very um, smart because we have a pool, we should use it as a pool. If we want to um, to use the overload, we can just use a single IP, point to that IP and use it. Um, but I can still do that. Right now I won't be able to do it because I have some translations in progress. So if I do overload at the end, it's not going to take it. So I need to clear. So I do um, clear IP not translation all. Once I clear that, I can go ahead and use the overload. And if I do the overload, all the computers will be able to ping. One can ping, two can ping, three can ping, four can ping as well. And if you go in Wireshock, you can see that all those computers are using the IP.4. So they're using a single IP in the pool and all the other IPs are being unused. This is just one of the solutions. But usually what you have to do uh, for efficiency is um, just have three computers for three IPs and then the, the, the other computers will be falling under a different ACL and will use a different NAT configuration to go out to the internet with the overload, of course. 
All right, thank you guys for watching. If you have any question, you can leave it in the comment. I'll be glad to respond. Again, this is part of the CCNA course on kbtrains.com. If you like it, go on the website and you're going to find the course. And if you also like it, like the course on um, YouTube and subscribe to the channel so you can see uh, all my future videos. Also follow me on social media, Facebook and Instagram, so we can connect easily. Thank you for watching this and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye.